Along with giving this particular practical expedient due to COVID, ICA has also inserted certain questions related to this COVID relief. Let's understand these questions and let's try to solve these questions. Now turn to your module 4 where we have additions to your study material. I will start somewhere from between. So please be careful with that question. Look at question number 73. I'm looking at page number around 62 or yeah, 64. I'm looking at page number 64 guys. Question number 73 which is relevant for COVID relief. Look at that question. LSR L leases retail space to lessee Z classifies the lease as an operating lease. The lease includes a fixed lease payments of 10,000 rupees per month. Due to COVID-19, L and Z agree to a lease concession that allows Z to pay no rental for the period from July to September, but to pay only but to pay 20,000 for the period from January to March. There is no change in the lease. How should the lease be accounted for? As, as such, there is no relief at all. Why is there no relief? Because if you look at, he has given me rent-free concession or rent-free accommodation for July, August, September. Three months. But he is asking me to pay double the rent for January, February, March in the same year. Therefore, since it is during the same year, I cannot consider this as a lease modification at all. There is no reduction in lease rental available as far as this particular concession is concerned. Therefore, you cannot apply practical expedient in this case because you have been given no concession as far as the lease rental is concerned. Look at the solution. L determines that the reduction in lease rentals in July to September and the proportionate increase in Jan to March does not result in an overall change in consideration. L does not have uh, does not account for this change as lease modification continues to recognize operating income on straight line basis which represents the pattern in which Z determines the Z derives the benefit from the use of underlying asset. But as such there is no relief. Look at next question. Probably there is a relief here. Look at it. Lessor M enters into a 10-year lease of office space with Lessee K which commences on 1st April 2015 and the lease rental is 15,000 rupees per month payable in areas. M classifies the lease as an operating lease. Right? So M reimburses X relocation cost of 60,000 which M accounts for as lease incentive. Lease incentive is recognized as a reduction in rental income over the lease term using the same basis as for rent lease income in the case of a straight line basis of 10 years. So even this relocation cost is a reduction of lease income over 10 years. First April pandemic M agreed to waive case rental payments for May, June and July 2020. The decrease in consideration is not included in the original terms and conditions of the lease. And therefore, is a lease modification. How is it accounted in the books of lessor? Guys, whenever you are talking about such kind of lease concession, and I am talking about lessor accounting, lessee practical expedient was available. Lessor, it would have simply treated on a straight line basis. Look at it. M accounts for this modification as a new operating lease because there is a lease modification, and the lease modification is substantial. So therefore, he will treat it as a new lease altogether. The earlier lease is expired on 1st April and from 1st April, a new lease has come into picture and he will have to classify this new lease accordingly and recognize according to India's 116. M recognizes the impact of waiver on a straight line basis over the remaining lease term of 5 years in the new lease. M also takes into account the carrying value of unamortized lease incentive that is 30,000 and, and M amortizes this balance on a straight line basis over the new lease term. If you look at, there is a lease concession given for 3 months. Apart from that, there is a lease incentive which was provided by the lessor for 6 lakhs which was provided throughout the lease term of 10 years. This lease commenced on 1st April 2015. 
when is the lease modification being effected from 1st april 20 that means 5 years already gone that means this relocation cost has been already charged to pnl to the extent of 3 lakhs remaining amount of relocation cost is only 3 lakhs on straight line basis if i talk about now if i look at there's a lease concession completely given for 3 months and if you look at the lease rental it is 15000 rupee per month calculate now how many years 5 years out of 5 years how many months the lease is 5 years means how many months 5 into 12 60 months out of 60 months he is not including as lease in, uh, he is not actually charging a lease or is waiving the lease for 3 months so that means minus 3 57 months he will pay how much he will pay for 57 months 15000 rupee per month that means he will pay 8 lakh 55000 rupees over 5 years of lease term but don't forget there is also a relocation cost of 3 lakhs which should also be charged as a reduction from lease rent so divided by 8 lakh 55000 divided by 5 years on a straight line basis would give me 1 lakh 71000 of lease income to be recognized but at the same time this 1 lakh 71000 of lease, in lease income should be reduced by the unamortized lease reloc relocation cost how much is the unamortized relocation cost 3 lakhs over how many years should i recognize 5 years that means how much per annum 60000 so 1 lakh 71000 should be reduced by 60000 of relocation cost therefore the income to be recognized is only 1 lakh 11000 you want i'll just solve it for you it's a new lease which is applicable from 1st april 2020 correct my lease term is for 5 years my lease rental is 15000 per month however waived for april to june 2020 that is exactly 3 months on that day, I also have unamortized lease incentive, which should be treated as a reduction from lease income to the lessor for an amount of 3 lakhs. On a straight line basis, this would have been 60,000 rupees per month per annum. So if I go like this, and if I have to find out a solution for this, I'll write like this. Total lease rental over lease term. Over the entire lease term, if I calculate the lease rent, then I'll get like this. Five years, each year into 12 months, reduced by three months of waiver, multiplied by the amount of lease rental 15,000 rupees per month this i said is 57 into 15 which would be 8 lakh 55000 thousand guys sorry 15000 rupees per month so this would have resulted in 8 lakh 55000 So therefore, lease rental recognized as income for lesser on straight line basis is equal to 8,55,000 over 5 years. Therefore, the lease income should be recognized to the extent of 1,71,000 per annum. However, the this should be reduced by 
amortization of lease incentive this should be reduced by amortization of lease incentive calculate the amortization of lease incentive lease incentive unexpired is 3 lakhs i have to provide it or reduce it from the lease income over 5 years that means i am reducing an amount of 60000 rupee per annum therefore what is the net amount to be credited to pnl 111000 is the lease income net recognized by the lessor per annum clear this is your computation necessary we are still talking about lesser practical expedient situation has not come up yet so on, i'll just repeat what i said i said the lease rental is 15000 rupees but however there's a three months of waiver option which is given to us therefore instead of paying the lease rental over five years into 12 months i'm reducing it by three months total i'm paying a lease rental only for 57 months if i charge 15000 rupees every month then the lease rental is 8,55,000. Out of this 8,55,000, if I apply straight line basis of measuring lease income, then I will recognize 1,71,000 into your credit of PNL every year. However, it should be reduced by the amount of lease incentive amortized, which is 60,000. Therefore, the net lease income recognized by the lessor every year to the credit of his PNL is one lakh eleven thousand now look at your PDF again going to your next question I know he will not write the answer I'm very sure about it he won't solve he will only give you the brief answer guys lesser l enters into an eight year lease of 40 lorries with lessee m which commences on 1st january the lease term approximate the lorry's economic life and no other features indicate that the lease transfers or does not transfer substantially all risk and rewards incidental to the ownership of the lorries guys as such that is sufficient indicator to say that this is a finance lease Assuming that substantially all risk and rewards incidental to the ownership are transferred, L classified this as finance lease. During COVID, M contracted with M contracted business and in June, L and M amended the contracts so, and it, so now it terminates on 31st December 2020. An early termination was not a part of terms and conditions of the lease and this therefore is a lease modification. The lease modification does not grant M an additional right to use the underlying asset and therefore cannot be accounted for as a separate lease. Guys, there is no further lease. The lease terminated on 31st December and the original lease and lease terms and conditions, they are <clears throat> not modification at all. So they cannot be treated as separate lease. They have to be treated as a lease modification itself. How should it be accounted for the lessor? Look at it. L determines that the modified lease term has become effective at the inception date. Lease term would not be a major part of lease lorry's economic life. Further, there is no indicator that the lessee would transfer substantially all risk and rewards. Therefore, this lease should be classified as operating lease. Therefore, starting from June 2020, the earlier lease, the original lease term, or that the original lease is expired, the new or modified lease should be considered as a new lease agreement which should be classified as an operating lease. So he derecognizes the lease receivable, recognizes the underlying asset, difference should be transferred to PNL. Whatever is the carrying value of the underlying asset should also be uh, immediately before modification should be recognized. 
no numbers out there that's a very simple example or illustration modifying a finance lease to become an operating lease earlier lease is expired new lease has come into picture so earlier lease it, when it was a finance lease i recognized the lease liability uh, sorry lease receivable and i've derecognized the underlying asset now you recognize the underlying asset and derecognize the lease receivable question number 76 now look at it this is where the lessee's accounting and the practical expedient are being offered a retailer q is leases a store in a large retail mall rent payable is 1 lakh rupee per month as a result of covid q agrees with the lessor to defer the rent originally due in the months of april to june 2020 as a part of this agreement, the rent for the period from Jan to March 2021 will be increased by 1,10,000 per month, right? Which compensates the lessor for the deferred rent as adjusted for time value of money. Guys, he's increasing the rent to 1,10,000 rupees. Actually, the rent foregone was only 1 lakh rupee per month. Why is he increasing it by 1,10,000? He is saying he wants to compensate the lessor and the deferred rent adjusted with the time value of money. Whether the rent deferral is eligible for practical expedient if the other conditions are met. Answer is absolutely no. If Even if there is no change in any other lease conditions, this particular reduction or waiver or deferral of lease rent cannot be considered as a practical expedient situation. The relief due to COVID is not available because the practical expedient is offered only if there is a reduction in lease rental. Here instead reverse, there is an increase in lease rental and he is actually giving a reason for the increase. He is saying that it is adjusted with the time value of money. As such, the relief is not available in this particular question of 76. You can write the relief. You can say that it is only satisfied if two conditions are met. Number one, there's a reduction in rent. Number two, all other conditions are not changing. Then the practical expedient is available. Here, since the lease rent is increasing from 1 lakh to 1 lakh 10, you cannot offer any practical expedient to the lessor, sorry, to the lessee. Therefore, it has to be treated as a lease modification. Revise the value of lease rental, so lease liability and the RUSA. He is considering it as applicable guys because he says the increase is only due to time value of money. So he is actually applying it as such. You cannot apply the practical expedient. He is saying he is applying it because he says it is reasonable because it is only commensurate to the time value of money. Look at 77. He operates in a chain of restaurants and leases out several outlets. As a result of COVID, P agrees a rent deferral with the lessor under the terms uh, under the terms which are originally due for the period from July 2020 up to December. Guys, up to June 2021 you can do it. So this is only up to December. So definitely it is applicable. Which was added to the rent due from July 2021 to December. Whether the rent deferral is eligible for practical expedient or not if other conditions are met. 100% it is available. Why is the practical expedient available? Because the rent concession is directly related to the pandemic. Number two, the recovery of the rent is only subsequent. But as such, if you look at, it is the rent recovered for the period which falls due from July to December 2020, which is within the period of 30th June 2021. Clear? There is no substantial change in other terms and conditions. 100% practical expedient is available to the lessee for this particular deferral. Lessee T leases an office building from the lessor. As a result of COVID pandemic, in September, T agrees a rent concession with the lessor where the monthly rent being reduced to 50% per month for the next 12 months 
commencing from 1st October. One case situation because if you look at, he is applying this rent concession from 1st October for a period of 12 months. That means the rent concession is offered up to 30th of September 2021. Your practical expedient is only available if there is a reduction or if it is the same lease rental up to 1st 30th of June 2021 only. Since this is beyond that period, the practical expedient is not available even though there is a reduction. Therefore, instead of applying practical expedient, the lessee should apply lease modification and remeasure your RAU asset and lease liability. Down below, rent deferral does not satisfy the criteria of practical expedient given under para 46B of India's 116. Rent deferral reduces the payment starting from October and the reduction will continue up to September which is beyond 30th June 2021. Therefore, T or the lessee is not permitted to apply practical expedient. Therefore, since he is not available, since the practical expedient is not available, he has to modify the lease and make sure that he is remeasuring the RU asset and the lease liability based on the new lease rentals or new sh schedule of lease rentals. He did not write that sentence. You write it. It is always important. Lessee is granted a lease concession by the lessor whereby the lease payments for the period of April to, to June was deferred 2020. Available, three months were added to the end of the lease term for the same monthly rent and the lessee pays the deferred rent during these additional months. Rent concession is a direct consequence of COVID-19 whether the practical expedient is available. 100% it is available but unfortunately if you look at there is an extension. There is an extension because when there is an extension that means the lease term is not remaining the same. There should not be any change in the other conditions or other terms of the lease. Here there is an extension of the lease. So let's see what is the answer that he writes. Let's see considers applying the practical expedient. In considering whether the rent concession is eligible for practical expedient, he takes into following the conditions. Firstly, the revised consideration is substantially the same. Yes, it is substantially the same because though he has given you a concession for three months, he added it towards the end. Secondly, the rent concession is only reduced up to 30th June 2021. 100% is satisfied. Thirdly, there is a change in the lease term. That means it is extended by three more months. There is no explicit guidance on whether that extended lease term is substantive or not. If it is substantive, then you cannot apply this particular practical expedient. If it is not substantive, then you can apply the practical expedient. Judgment will require to be considered whether it is the quant quant quantitative and qualitative factors. The lessee assesses the three months extension, whether it is substantial and the same lease payments would continue to, co to constitute a substantive change. Hence, conditions of para 46B are met. Since the rent concession is a direct consequence and all other conditions are met and the lease concludes that the rent concession is available for practical expedient. Guys, he is considering it as practical expedient because he is considering that three months is not substantial. But it depends, it is a judgment which we have to take whether it is substantial or not. There is no substantial change in other terms and conditions. Now what is substantial? You never know. If the lease term is 10 years and the lease is increasing only by 3 months, not substantial. But the lease is only for 3 years, 3 months increase is almost 10% increase. You can say that it is not, you cannot consider it as not substantial. Lessee Z enters into a lease contract with Lessor L for the lease of 1500 square meters of retail space for 5 years. Lease commenced on 1st April and the lease rentals of 1 lakh are payable quarterly in advance starting from 1st April. 1st April, 1st July, 1st October, 1st Jan. Z's incremental borrowing rate is 5% assuming that it is the interest rate implicit from lease cannot be determined. There is no initial direct cost, lease incentive or dismantling cost. Z's business is severely impacted by COVID. L and Z negotiate a lease rent concession on 1st June and L agreed 
to provide Z with an unconditional rent concession that Z allows to forego rent due on 1st June. That is, L forgoes Z's payment for the month of 1 lakh due on 1st July. So, one rent, rent concession he has given. What is the accounting treatment for the lease concession assuming that it is eligible for practical expedient? Now, I leave this question to you. I leave this question to you. I want you to put an effort in solving this question. What is the accounting entry that you will record? Please tell me what is the accounting entry if there is a practical expedient. If there is a practical expedient, then definitely I will not consider that there is a lease modification. So I don't have to revise the values of lease liability and ROUSA. I want you people to solve it. Hope you have read through the question. Please try solving it. Talking about question number 80. Put some efforts on solving the question. Think about what is the accounting entry that you would write. Think about what is the entry that you will write. Tell me what I will write guys. Entry. Since practical expedient is available. So the let's see. These modification need not be considered to remeasure. It was not available. I would have remeasured lease liability and ROUSA. Lease liability and ROUSA. Correct. So, therefore, the lease liability and ROUSA would still remain the same. Then due to the rent waiver which is provided, how many months rent waiver did he provide? He has provided me with a rent waiver of, at the rent waiver that he has provided. On 1st June, they provided that Z has no concessional rent only for the period, only for one quarter, which is the amount due on 1st July. So therefore on 1st July, when the rent was supposed to be paid, I would have written the entry as, Lease liability account debit amount to be paid is one lakh. The amount of reduction in lease rental first of July 2020. To actually, the amount should have been credited to bank, but since there is a concession which is being provided, instead of writing it to bank. I will write it as two lease concession. How much amount? Same amount, entire amount waived off, one lakh. This lease concession which you have credited has to be transferred to PNL. So I'll record the entry as lease concession account debit. to P and L.
should be credited to PNL as income. Clear? And this will be the accounting treatment that I will pass if practical expedient was available. Guys, if the lessee is choosing not to do this, then he will have to apply the lease modification where he will change the value of lease liability and also consequently change the value of ROU asset. I am not taking that situation now. Look at the solution what he has provided. He won't even write the entry, he will just write the conditions. That determines that the rent concession is eligible for practical expedient. Applying the practical expedient, Z should account the forgiveness of rent as a negative variable lease, lease payment. The lease concession is unconditional. So the event that triggers the variable lease payment is the agreement between Z and L for lease concession on 1st June. So June, I thought July it was. Therefore, Z accounts the negative variable lease rental as concession on 1st June. Assuming that there is no other change, Z continues to use the retail space and the RU asset is not impaired. The accounting entry is follows. Recognize the lease concession as variable lease payment in the PNL. Continue to accrue interest on lease liability, which is unchanged based on 5% of the incremental borrowing rate. After accounting impact of lease concession, Z's lease liability represents the present value of future lease payments owing to L discontinued, uh, discounted at the unchanged incremental borrowing rate that effectively derecognize the portion of lease liability that has been extinguished by forgiveness of a quarterly lease payment. In addition, Z continues to depreciate the carrying value which is unchanged as a result of lease concession or rent concession. Clear? So that will predominantly bring us to certain questions which the uh, ICA has, has inserted into your additions to study material. Only one point where I differ with ICA is when the lease rental has changed commensurate to the increase in time value of money. There is no such condition given as far as the question is con uh, as far as the para is concerned but he felt it was reasonably approximate to increase the lease rental by the time value of money. So he considered that the practical expedient is available. So let us agree with ICA saying that if the lease rental has increased with which is exactly equal to the time value of money or which represents a time value of money, let us avail or let us make the lessee available with the practical expedient for the purpose of your exam. Clear? So that will bring us to the end of discussion on this para which was inserted recently uh, due to COVID and there is a lease concession which I am talking about.